Okay, today I'm going to show you how to write a blog post that is good for SEO, search engine optimization, as well as being interesting to read and show you how to do it really fast. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have three plugins installed. And I'll put a link down below to a how to install plugins if you've never done this before. But I use three different plugins, one that's called Atomic Blocks, Gutenberg Blocks Collection, one that's called Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, and then Ultimate Blocks. So get those installed once the, and activate them. Once they're installed, then we're going to have all different things that we can do. Okay, the next thing you want to go is to Settings, UAG, which is Ultimate blocks by Gutenberg or whatever. But the, the reason why you want to go here is because they have your reusable blocks. So this is super important. You want to have um, set up, and I'll put a link to a video about how to make reusable blocks. But what I did was I made a reusable block for my FTC disclosure. So I have a couple of them. So this is one of them, and all it is is this little thing. Please note, I recommend res resources. And so it's super easy to do, and then there's a link to my policies. Because if you're going to have affiliate products or anything in your blog posts where you're making money from it, you need to have that disclaimer up at the top. Now you want to do new at the top, posts, and you're going to add what I consider to be the working title. Okay, so today we're going to write maybe the most boring thing that you've ever heard of. We're going to write the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge, which is two different kinds of glue. So you would think that this cannot be interesting. And I'm telling you that anything that you want to write about can be interesting. So the first thing you want to do is you want to um, do some research on your SEO terms you want to use, okay? So Neil Patel has a free t SEO tool called Ubersuggest, which you could use. I use SEMrush. And what you want to do is you want to find some high volume, and for me, high volume means over, let's say, a thousand searches a month keywords. So we're going to say Mod Podge. And any of the SEO tools will do this. They'll give you an idea of what, what kind of search volume you can get. So 90,000 searches a month is really good. But overall, what you want to do is you want to get an idea of what people are searching for when they're looking for Mod Podge or your keyword term. Like what can you use it? Can you use it to transfer things? Can you use it on wood? Can you use it on paper? Can you use it to seal? Okay, so those are all things that I want to think about when I do this. We're gonna let this think about itself for a minute and we're gonna get started with writing our blog post. So you want to have an introductory paragraph that's super interesting. And this is because when you do a search on Google, so let's just do a the difference between matte and gloss mud podge, right? So when you see this, number one, Mod Podge Rocks blog is a very good blog. So they're kind of who I am competing with. We come at blog posts from different angles. They're coming at it from a Mod Podge based perspective. And I'm coming at it from an artistic perspective. So just because you see somebody that has a really good blog post doesn't mean that you can't compete with them because this doesn't exactly answer 
the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge, right? That is not exactly what I answered. So I have the ability to write a blog post that is going to um, answer that exact question. Okay, so now this is a blog post on my website, Matt versus Gloss Mod Podge. And you would think, oh, well, um, if I already ranked for that term, why would I write another blog post? So first things first, I want to change these around. This is why this is my working title, Gloss and Matte Mod Podge, which is a different keyword, right? It's not significantly different, but it's at least slightly different. And so that is something that we can look at. But this is what you want to see. Your first paragraph, Google used to allow us to dictate what that first, what the snippet, it's called the snippet, would be, which is the, the, the words that are used to describe the blog post. Now they tend to pull out whatever the heck they feel like, but they do that on a really high level with machine learning, so they probably do a good job. But I want to write the best possible introduction that's interesting to people that may want to know that. And also, so this is my other video, Matt versus Gloss Mod Podge. I just made this video and this is the one that's going to um, be in my blog post, okay? So I want to dominate this page with multiple different results. So I'm gonna write a really fun introductory paragraph. And I'm also going to revise my working title to the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge in collage art. Because I am trying to rank for collage art rather than gloss and matte Mod Podge. Isn't that fun? Today, we are going to look at how, at how matte and gloss Mod Podge differ in your artwork depending on whether you want a plain or shiny finish okay and that is very different than what this is practical comparison in your mixed media or art journal right so this is this one is actually where I take four different kinds of things and I compare them. So this is a totally different post. Okay, here comes the magic that is having all kinds of blocks installed and being able to use the shortcuts on your computer keyboard to write blog posts fast. So we've done the hard part. Now you wanna hit return and type forward slash I am, which will bring up images. You hit enter, and that's gonna put an image in there. I don't put my, I don't do my image until the very end, but I'm going to put that block in there so that I know that there is going to be an image in my finished blog post. Now, the reason you wanna do that is because if you come here to images, the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge, this is, this comes directly from my old video and that original post. So you can show up multiple times for all of the results, images, videos, anything that you can show up for, you wanna show up for. So the way you're gonna show up for that is to have an image. The next thing you want to do is you want to type forward slash and then whatever you named your reusable block with your FTC disclaimer if you're going to have anything in there. So if I type forward slash FTC, I can say FTC plane and that's going to put that reusable block in there. I don't have to... Um, type it out or do anything, it just automatically adds it there. Last but not least, you wanna add your table of contents by typing table. 
I like the purple table of contents. You can use the red table of contents. I believe the red is the atomic blocks. I don't know what the purple is. But I like how this does it. And what it's going to do is you can designate over here what levels of your like H1, H2 tags are going to show up. And as you type, you're going to be able to, it's just going to build it itself. Now that gives Google a really good way to categorize the contents of your post. And it's what's called schema, S-C-H-E-M-A, meaning it's written in a specific programming language that I don't know how to do, but I do know that when I have a table of contents, it makes it easier for Google to index the different parts of my blog post. So now this is probably the hardest part about mixing SEO, search engine optimization, which is using keywords that Google wants to be able to index and then writing an interesting blog post, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at the keywords that are here by volume. So Mod Podge, obviously, dishwasher safe isn't what I'm talking about, not spray, is Mod Podge waterproof. So that's going to come under my FAQ. So I'm going to type FAQ, well, I'm going to type forward slash heading, right? And then I'm going to say Mod Podge FAQ down here. This is this is going to be more about Mod Podge than it's going to be about um, the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge. Then I type words here, li literally the word words, so I remember to put words there. And then I'm going to uh, a answer this question this question what is it is mod podge waterproof is mod podge waterproof okay so you may be thinking that so this is going to be a heading but now i want it to be a heading three you're thinking that that's just a generalized question but what happens is that for google to want to rank your blog posts according to a topic it wants to know that you understand and you're going to provide information to your reader that is relevant to the questions that they may have regarding your your topic so say i have that old blog post and it may also i may have done the same research and it may have that question is mod podge waterproof but if you're literally writing your own blog posts and you're typing it out, even if I tried to match what I wrote the last time, I would never be able to do it. So for the question, is Mod Podge waterproof? I'm going to answer it this way. So as it relates to collage art, Mod Podge is waterproof because it provides a ceiling barrier between layers of your artwork. That said, I wouldn't want to pour water directly onto my art journal or stick it in the dishwasher, right? So this is how you write interesting things that are still SEO'd. You, you give them the factual information about what they're looking for and then you also have your personality in there, right? Let's find some more questions. So I can find the questions in here. The nice thing about this is um, using SEMrush, which is expensive. It's like 120 bucks a month or something like that. But they'll give me all the questions. You could also do it for free. You can come over here to the people also ask, which Mod Podge is better, glossy or matte? right so i like that question i'm going to put that over top of my other question i'm going to make this a heading right heading i'm going to make it a heading three because my heading two is my faq and i'm going to put words here what else we got any other good ones what is mod podge now that's probably going to be my very first question up here so if you do forward slash heading, you don't have to do the any formatting. What is Mod Podge? And you can see it's building it, right? It's building that table of contents for you. Words go there. 
What do you use Mod Podge map for? What is Gloss Mod Podge used for? Does map Mod Podge dry clear? So I'm going to have and words. And then I'm going to have does Gloss Mod Podge dry clear? And I have pictures of this. So I can show the difference in my video between how gloss mod podge and how matte mod podge looks on actual art journal pages so the more pictures and the more information you can include the better right so those are from here the nice thing is so you can click that and then it's going to give you more what do you use mod podge for what is gloss mod podge used for um is mod podge a matte medium and you can just keep adding those. And the way that I uh, decide whether it's going to be in my FAQs or if it's going to be in my words. So this is super important and I want to talk to you about it as far as writing an interesting blog post, but also an informative blog post and fulfilling the question that you posed with your title, right? So the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge in collage art. Does gloss Mod Podge dry clear? Does matte Mod Podge dry clear? Are directly related to the difference between matte and gloss Mod Podge in collage art. Is Mod Podge waterproof? Is not, right? Like that's not about the difference between those two kinds of glue so any faqs are things that i think that they might also be interested in knowing but my blog post itself is going to be very much focused on exactly answering the question that somebody has searched for in google and if you find yourself writing a lot more than just so Mod Podge has another thing called dimensional magic. If I found myself writing about, well, gloss Mod Podge and dimensional magic are somewhat similar, then I would take that out of this blog post and make a whole other blog post of it for itself. So I'm going to write my blog post and I will come back and show you the final results. Okay, so I did my blog post. I have my good, strong par first paragraph. I have a picture that is named the difference between gloss and matte Mod Podge and also the alt text, which is a way for the American with Disabilities Act for people with readers to be able to read what it says, but it also helps with SEO. There is my FTC disclosure. I didn't put any affiliate links in here. I just linked out to Liquitex and um, one other place, but I always put in the affiliate disclosure just in case. The table of contents built itself, which I love. You could change the color of the background. I don't really mind. I use my keywords. What is Mod Podge? I linked, okay, so this is important. I internally linked Mod Podge to my giant Mod Podge. I have a individual Mod Podge page that tells you almost everything about all the Mod Podges. Um, so I link to that. I have a list of what Mod Podge does. The thing that you want to do when you're writing a blog post is make it interesting for people to read. And the way you do that is by having a variety of different things going on. So you want to have headings to break stuff up. You want to have really short paragraphs it feels really weird to have one sentence paragraphs but even on the computer if there is a block of text it's overwhelming to read but most people read on their phone so that becomes totally overwhelming uh magazine collage i linked out to another magazine collage page back to mod podge i talked about oh here is a walkthrough video of the difference between gloss and matte mod podge the reason why I love to have a video inside my blog post is that it increases time on page. So when you do a search for Mod Podge or anything on Google 
and you click through to that link, say you're on there for five minutes because three of it's watching my video and reading my blog post and then you go back, Google will consider that to be a successful, like I gave them information they were interested in and the answer to their question. If they come over here, spend 30 seconds and bounce right back to Google, then Google's going to think that the information I gave them isn't very good. So you, the more you can increase time on page, the better. Some information about collage, a picture. So anytime you can include a picture to break this up. Um, answering the questions we found earlier. And my Mod Podge FAQs. And then an additional resource to a different kind of map medium. So, I wrote my entire blog post without worrying, except for the little bit of research I did into what kind of topics that Google would think. Now, I use SEMrush, which has a plugin where I can, instead of having to go here and putting the finding the keywords and then putting them in, I can use this SEM rush inside my WordPress, which is one of the reasons why I don't mind paying for it monthly. So let's say we're going to do Matt Mod Podge, Gloss Mod Podge, and how about just Mod Podge? Okay. And then you say, you come down here and you get recommendations. Okay, and you can do the same kind of thing with market moves, with phrase, F-R-A-S-E. I know my assistant uses that. Um, but the one I, the reason I like this one so much is, and, and in that case, you would copy and paste it in, and then it would uh, do it on the side. But the reason I like this one so much is you can come in to just this float mode, So Mod Podge, it's, it's mad because I have it too much. I'm kind of okay with that. I'm not going to worry about it right now. And the thing is that I wrote a blog post that's interesting to humans because I didn't spend all my time writing it for um, SEO. I spent it writing a good quality blog post. And now we're going to go in and make sure that the mod, that, that it's right. Um, okay, so paper wood fabric, that's not part of mine. Crafting projects, so I could put that. Uh, which is better, gloss or matte? So down here, I can say um, for crafting product projects, like my decorative. <laughs> decorative boxes I use matte because it didn't need to be shiny right so it just even added another little bit of thing now I can make a link in here to decorative boxes. How to make decorative storage boxes. And that will help my SEO on that blog post. Glue sealer and finisher. Uh, Mod Podge is great as a sealer, adhesive, or top coat. So I could say, instead of a sealer, adhesive, top coat, I could say, Glue sealer and finish and make that one happy. Uh, do, 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 do. Decoupage products. So that was a decoupage for decorative boxes. Decoupage project. And it doesn't matter if it's uh, single or plural. 
fabric paper or fabric okay i could put that under my collage section what is collage layer upon layer of mixed media materials like tissue paper scrap paper uh, uh let's say vintage ephemera scrap paper or fabric there we go um podge gloss so i can't imagine i don't have mod podge gloss somewhere okay here we go we can it's mad it's mad at mod podge but we could do does mod podge gloss there we go now we got podge gloss oh apply mod podge um i could i could make a little section i even think that's in the top how do you apply mod podge and i could have done that with a heading but we're going to do a heading i use and i'll just finish this paragraph okay so i use a brush most of the time but i also use like to use a um, I would say a regular paintbrush most of the time, comma. Nope. Comma. But I also like to use a silicone makeup brush. Here comes an additional resource. And I think in my YouTube, I do have a video about using a silicone brush i did a year of videos so i did a video a day every weekday for a year so if it sounds like i might not necessarily know what all my videos are that's why we're going to see if my channel i think i have one and that would be a nice addition to get a little bit more uh views let's see and it's good for my readers, right? They may want to find out about silicone brushes. There we go. Copy. We could put in a YouTube video. It doesn't, have to ha it doesn't hurt to have that there. YouTube. Yeah, see? There we go um let's can we get that out of the way i guess i don't need this now so you just click remove block and then it goes away or you could back it up just hit back 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 i'm making the back motion like you can see it um okay so uh decoupage medium yeah so now we have is mat mod podge a matte medium i'm also going to put down here under my faqs so i'm going to type heading i'm going to make it a heading two because it goes or a heading three because it goes underneath in the table of contents and i'm going to say is mod podge a decoupage medium okay so i said yes I think most of us had moms who decoupage something when we were young and I could never get over my love of decoupage and collage. The decoupage part is having the Mod Podge under the fabric or paper and then over as a ceiling top coat. I added fabric because we have, ooh, we could do paper, wood, fabric. Maybe we could get it in here, paper. It's not exactly English, right? <laughs> correct english but i made it work okay so oh soap and water the reason why that's there is how can you clean your brushes and we won't do mod podge off your brushes because it's already mad we have too many mod podges so we're going to say heading we're going to say heading three and then we're gonna get soap and water in there. It is super easy to clean off your brushes or work 
area because it is water based you can just use soap and water there you go all right that is going to be it for me on this uh one thing i do like to check occasionally is how long it is it's 765 words this is a very specific post it's not a overall post but you can see i covered an awful lot of the keywords and i answered the questions that the people who are looking for this exact keyword term were looking for and so this should rank really well for this it's probably a pretty low volume for this specific query but this is a really good blog post and somebody who's new to mod podge would get a lot of good information from it because i know what i'm talking about so let's talk about if you're writing blog posts that you don't exactly know um you don't have the depth of knowledge that i do with mod podge because i really care about mod podge um you're going to want to do a lot of research for it right that's why writers who um, are freelancers and have to learn need to do some research to find out that general knowledge and then have somebody uh, who knows the kind of um, topic you're writing about review it and make sure that what you're saying is correct. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.